Imagine thinking Kyle Walker was six tenths for England. Imagine watching England and thinking Kyle Walker played at six tenths level and Declan Rice was poor again. Oh, and if you want to read about Sam Matterface, click here. Even the sun cannot bother us today. We really don't feel like being snarky today. So we are going to smile as we go through the newspapers as they react to England's effing stupendous victory over Denmark. That said, the sun can f off with their back page of its coming home, featuring the colors of the Italian flag. Can we not just enjoy this glorious victory for a second, please? Talking of enjoyment, we are very happy to see the Sun's chief sports writer Dave Kidd get on board the England fun train and write about one explosion of joy as he attended a rave, a festival and a mass meeting of a religious cult all rolled into one, claiming that Southgate's team were all heroes. As we are all happy bunnies today, we will barely mention the fact that Kidd had previously written that England looked nothing like a team capable of going deep into this tournament or that there have been few signs so far that England can beat world champions France, European champions Portugal or their perennial tournament bogeymen, the Germans. And then, of course, England just bored Germany to death. And now you want to believe? Ah uh, okay, climb the F aboard. Sweating the big stuff we did rather enjoy this nakedly selfish line from Charlie White about Gareth Southgate's management. The paranoia which was around the squad under former boss Roy Hodgson and coach Gary Neville has also been replaced by hard work, positivity, and enjoyment. Unlike that squad at France 2016, they do not mind being pictured with unicorns in the pool. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Gareth Southgate's greatest triumph. Pasta the sick bucket it started already. This is the lead story on the Sun Online's football page at 10.30 a.m. the morning after the night before. Pasta blasters England now face Italy in Euro 2020 final, but histories against Gareth Southgate in our biggest game for 55 years is pasta blasters? It's going to be a really bloody long three days. But after days of bacon, Carlsberg and the Little Mermaid, at least pasta, pizza, salami, and, erm, Vespas will make a nice stereotypical change. Hilarity ensues further down the page, you can watch Sokka and Grealish do hilarious Maguire impression as they chat to friends after England reach Euro 2020 final. They literally chatted to friends. From a distance. Not an impression. Not hilarious. And definitely not news. Grading's player ratings are of course subjective, but, well, we thought that the Daily Mirror giving no England player higher than 8 tenths was ridiculous, apparently, Raheem Sterling deserved only 7 tenths for trying to set the tempo until we saw Sky Sports and their ratings. Seriously, you might want to rethink your career choices if you watched Kyle Walker over 120 minutes in which he was utterly phenomenal and decided that he was the worst player in a white shirt with his 6 tenths stylings. Full marks for the critical covering run and tackle to stop Damsgaard when the Danish forward broke through but unable to offer anything of note going forward, and his distribution was erratic. But when England needed experience and clear heads, he didn't make a mistake. So full marks for stopping the opposition scoring, and everything but creating two chances, only Mason Mount and Harry Kane created more, and having a pass completion rate of 90.6%, only Raheem Sterling, Declan Rice and John Stones were more accurate of England's starting's eye, was frankly embarrassing. 6 out of 10 and you are lucky to get that, Mr. Walker. Pity the red, but however uncomfortable we are with Kyle Walker getting 6 tenths from some anonymous Sky Twonk, it's slightly less upsetting than the Liverpool Echo rating seen entirely though red glasses. Imagine watching that England performance, nobody got more than 8 tenths obviously, and coming up with this headline, England player ratings as Declan Rice proves Jordan Henderson mistake and Jordan Pickford recovers, that makes us feel a little sad. Surely nobody wants to watch an England game entirely through the lens of what's the Liverpool angle, but that's what local journalism has become. And that means that of course you have to write that Declan Rice, 6, was poor again and rather fortunate to be keeping his place ahead of Jordan Henderson while Calvin Phillips, 6, was slightly better than Rice, but that's not saying much, all to emphasize the brilliance of the Liverpool captain, whose 26 minutes of football, no shots, no chances created, no tackles, no interceptions, definitely deserved a 7 tenths, making him equally as good as Walker and Harry Maguire, and definitely better than Luke Shaw and John Stones. This means bore, and what did the Liverpool Echo learn from that England win? Other than that Henderson is so much better than the other non-Liverpool England midfielders, of course. Harry Kane sends Liverpool warning as Bukayo Saka regret highlighted yes, that was our immediate thought on watching Kane play really well and score, that he was sending a warning to Liverpool that he could make the champions Manchester City even better next season. We're just surprised that wasn't the first thing he said when he was interviewed by ITV.